Good day, everyone. My name is uh, Razvan. I'm uh, the OSS Community Manager for the Unicraft Project. It's my pleasure to uh, give you an update of what's been happening in the community and what uh, where are we heading with the Unicraft Project. Uh, this The talk was supposed to be titled uh, Unicraft Weather Report. Uh, this was traditionally being delivered by uh, Simon Kunzer, our, uh, let's say, uh, uh, chief developer. Uh, and I'm going, I'm going to take over. And since I'm most focused on the community, I also integrate some of the community uh, items, not only uh, the, the technical ones. Um, so for the next slide, please, uh, a bit of intro for those of you uh, who are, aren't aware. Uh, Unicraft is this uh, fast um, Unicraft development kit. What it does is, as you see here in the, um, uh, in, in the screen and on, on the GitHub page, uh, it allows you to create custom configurable Unicraft image, Unikernel images, uh, that you can run as a virtual machine. The goal being that you would create a minimal virtual machine unencumbered by all the uh, subsystems that you would have, let's say, in your typical uh, Linux development. You do tailoring of it, you can make choice between components, scheduling, allocators, networking stack, stack, whatever is required for your application. And then, uh, these components uh, have multiple, um, uh, let's say, implementation. There's a common API for scheduling, a common API for allocation. You select among those, and then based on those, you create your uh, your own image. Uh, the entire thing is open source. It's on the BSD license, uh, and you can see there, there are, there are a lot of repos. Uh, as part of the image, you can see there are 181 repos. Uh, it, that's because, so core repos, there's a core Unicraft repo, there's documentation one and some others. The other ones are uh, imported components for from existing libraries, for example, Python interpreter, uh, Libsodium, standard C library, uh, uh, Redis, all applications that have been ported uh, on top of Unicraft, and then they, uh, they are now uh, located in a repository in the Unicraft organization. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, what I want to brief you is uh, what's been happening during the past uh, uh, the past year. Um, so if you can uh, go to the next slide, please. Um, this is our, uh, uh, we, we did a lot of work community side and this is what's been happening during the past two years. Uh, up until some time there was, uh, the uh, GitHub was only used as a, as a mirror. But starting from 2020, we moved to GitHub. And as you can see, there's been a quite exponential growth in the number of stars in the repo. This is uh, due to uh, continuous and constant involvement and passionate involvement through a number of uh, uh, people in the community. I'm, I'm going to share you some numbers uh, to see how, how that's happening. Uh, you can see that at the beginning of 2022, there's um, a kind of a, a very large increase. This was part of our if I recall 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 release, uh, and that uh, got a bump on uh, Hacker News. And uh, based on uh, on that, on Hacker News, uh, there are a lot of questions, a lot of people that started and wanted to know more, more about uh, Unicraft. Uh, on the next slide, uh, you're going to see some uh, some numbers of uh, what's been happening uh, with uh, uh, before and what's the current status in uh, um, uh, you're, you're yeah, the, I, I can do it. I can do it now. Yeah, uh, when uh, on Unicraft. So this on the left, this is what's uh, what's been ha what was the state uh, eighteen months ago in March twenty twenty one. About twenty two hundred GitHub stars. Uh, we were using Mattermost, uh, Mattermost server. This was a bit difficult because it requires some sort of invite uh, from us to join. Uh, there had been five releases in uh, close to four years. Uh, and this was kind of the average number of commits and contributions. What I want to point out is that the last two items haven't changed so much. So kind of the uh, the project is maturing. The number of contributions is fairly constant. We are also taking a, a larger number of, uh, let's say, action items to improve the project, not so much to add new features. Uh, we, are, uh, we are looking into uh, debugging, adding documentation, uh, doing tests, uh, improving the uh, the coding style, making improvements, uh, security and performance improvements. Uh, but what's been happening is kind of the first three items is more on the community side and what's been happening to increase the visibility 
and the engagement of the community. So for that, you can see that uh, we are now uh, actually, I think we are now 941, 942 stars. So there's, there's been a, a, a huge increase in the number of, uh, of stars and project visibility. Uh, this was due to us also increasing our release schedule. So you can see now there are 10 releases uh, in 18 months. Uh, we updated our, uh, our release plan and uh, the way the community works such that every two months there will be a, a release. So uh, increase the frequency, make, make sure then that most of the PRs make it and we have uh, frequent feature full uh, releases. This was also doubled by the uh, move to Discord. We moved to Discord about one year ago, so one year and maybe three or four months ago. Uh, and this allowed a lot of people to join. There is kind of a constant stream of people joining uh, Discord, uh, checking how things are working, asking, asking for support, and also being part of the events that you organize, uh, as you are going to see later. Uh, these kind of items uh, work uh, key factors in increasing the project visibility and uh, getting uh, a healthy number of uh, contributors to the project. Um, I'm going to go to some key items. So all these items on uh, regarding Discord community and uh, um, documentation, you're going to see these were factors contributing to the uh, evolution of the of the community. So this is our Discord channel. Uh, uh, we have multiple channels. Each particular topic that we cover in Unicraft has its own channel. There are also role channels. We have event channels. Uh, the benefit of Discord is that uh, it's easy to access. You, you have both video calls, so we can do video calls, community community calls happen uh, over here. There are a lot of bots integrations, so we have uh, announcement bots that uh, are synced with the calendar invites. Uh, they send periodic notifications. All of these uh, actions happen here. It's easy to create new channels. There are private channels. There are public channels, text, uh, text, uh, uh, audio. All of these are part of, uh, of the Discord experience. And it's uh, the essential tool that we use to uh, keep the community together for once and also attract potential new users and help them around with, uh, with Unicraft. Uh, the other item is on GitHub governance. Uh, we have now a repo on governance. This lays out some key rules uh, on the way the community works. And also, uh, we are now heavily using GitHub features such as GitHub code owners, um, uh, CICD components from GitHub, and also the, the recent, this was this has been improved in the last year, uh, GitHub projects. Uh, this is what you see here, allowing you easy management of tasks. What we have here, each release, has its own uh, view of the of the PRs and issues at order. Uh, there are multiple such as these uh, types of projects. Each particular subtract has its own, and it's easy to manage within the community, knowing which items uh, are happening at which point and who are owners for these items. Uh, this is also related to uh, some automation that's happening, uh, meaning that if you want to be part of a sub team, what we call this a special interest group in the community, you simply create a PR and you'll be part of that uh, of that team. And also there is an automatic, uh, an automated uh, component that based on those special interest groups assigns people to new PRs and new issues. So for example, if there's a PR dealing with scheduling and you are part of the scheduling group, you would be assigned as a reviewer or as, 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 an, as an assignee uh, to that particular PR. So heavily using GitHub governance and GitHub features to automate as much as possible and manage uh, the community and the, uh, its uh, its projects. Uh, the other one is the use of community roles. So up until maybe one year ago, everything was more or less flat, meaning everyone did what they could, and uh, uh, it was kind of a peer to peer. We now we have now moved to something more hierarchical. So there is a group of maintainers. Um, who are uh, allocated particular uh, parts uh, of the project and they they own those. They make sure that everything happens okay. They are usually the uh, the ones that do the final approval uh, on the PRs uh, and ensure that everything works properly. Uh, we have created, uh, we are now creating uh, an OSS roadmap. An OSS roadmap is composed of tracks. Uh, and each track has an owner and a take lead. An owner is the person who makes sure that happens. 
and the tech, tech lead is the one that makes it happen. So the tech lead is a technical person. The owner is more, let's say, of uh, what you may see of as a product owner or as a project owner in a given company. Uh, this allows to have uh, specific roles and, and people to contact to talk about uh, a given track as part of the roadmap. Um, there's a reviewer role. Uh, the reviewer role is the one that's going to be assigned on PRs. Once again, he, if uh, that person is part of a, a given uh, special interest group, they would be assigned as reviewers to, uh, uh, to a given PR once that is opened. And also there's, uh, we, we have recently created the community leadership roles and we have multiple, I, uh, multiple, um, responsibilities. Uh, there's a community lead for CICD. There's a community lead for GitHub and governance. Uh, there's another one for documentation. There's another one for hackathons. Um, uh, there's another one for blog posts and, uh, and one for releases. And each of those takes care of that particular view in the community. This is doubled as you're going to see soon by periodic meetings of maintainers, of community leads, and then uh, uh, meetings in each particular technical group. Um, and speaking of that, uh, so we have this happening uh, on the Discord channel there. As I said, there are channels per topic inside the project and there are all channels per different uh, uh, working groups. Uh, and uh, this is doubled by uh, meetings that happen uh, weekly or once every two weeks uh, on different uh, different uh, on specific topics, technical topics. There's the weekly community meeting where everyone gathers and uh, uh, we discuss what are uh, current items, important items, questions from everyone and plans for the uh, next uh, release or for the next weeks. Uh, there is a maintainers meeting and there is also a community leaders meeting, making sure that everything works on track. The maintainers meeting is mostly focused on the technical architectural side, whereas the community one is more focused on the community processes, the governance uh, and healthy participation of everyone who is uh, involved. All of these meetings uh, are uh, uh, have a summary that's, uh, that's, pre uh, that's uh, shown publicly. Uh, in a meeting notes repo on, on GitHub. So kind of everything is in the same area of open source, open content. Um, on the documentation side, uh, this has been a revamp. So uh, the, the current website uh, has been completely redone. This happened uh, early, early this year, if I recall. Uh, and now there's a healthy amount of documentation. This is on the, an ongoing effort. There's still work to be done on that side. Uh, and there's this repo docs. Uh, everything is now written in Markdown and Markdown is generated uh, via Hugo server. Uh, uh, the, a particular uh, Go-based uh, server is then published into the actual website via a CCD uh, component. Everything has been revamped documentation side. Uh, there, there, there are topics on, uh, there are technical topics, technic uh, there are features of Unicraft and then advice uh, and uh, um, uh, let's say uh, conventions and guidelines for contributors, reviewers and users of Unicraft. Um, all of this also happened uh, during this year. Uh, what we've also uh, been doing uh, starting from uh, spring this year, uh, we are organizing hackathons. So the first, the, 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 the the easiest one is the weekly hackathon. This is going, uh, this is taking place online. However, uh, in, uh, in my university also meet the face to face, uh, uh, in a place in university. It uh, takes four hours, uh, on Saturday. So it, this happens weekly on each Saturday and we work on topics that are important that way at, at that time. Each participant lays out uh, a day before what are the topics, uh, they are going to work on. And then they are going to work on that topic uh, during the hackathon. Afterwards, we collect uh, summaries for everyone. And then we, we publish uh, this as a meeting note uh, in the meeting notes repo. Uh, what uh, we've, uh, we've uh, done uh, hackathons in universities. So it was one in Lyon and one in Aachen. And about uh, a month from now, we're going to organize a hackathon in Munich, October 20, 20, 23. This usually takes place for two days. The first day is mostly tutorials training. And the other one, we have challenges, uh, Unicraft related challenges that participants, mostly students, are going to be engaged to, to, to solve. Uh, the other, uh, this, everything uh, basically started with an event 
Uh, it was one year ago. It was, it's called Unicraft Summer of Code. This was a uh, two weeks workshop, 10 days, four hours per day. Uh, that, uh, where a, a set of people online, uh, were trained and then they were engaged the community. And this is, this is very healthy to attract potential new contributors, uh, from everyone who found working on Unicraft interesting. Uh, this year, about, uh, about three weeks ago, uh, we had our uh, second edition, so Unicraft Summer of 2022. All of these took place online uh, on uh, on Discord. Also, we plan uh, this is going to likely turn into a, a yearly event, Unicraft Summer of Code. But also, we plan other types of workshops to take place in other universities. We are in discussion with Manchester, uh, with Karlsruhe, and uh, we're likely going to uh, do others as well, kind of to promote uh, using Unicraft, seeing how well, cool, interesting, and um, uh, potentially something that attracts uh, open source contributors. Um, these are some pictures from the from this. Uh, this this was part of hack uh, of Aachen. This is uh, in uh, in UPB. We had a, a hackathon there. Uh, this is also in Aachen. If you could see here, uh, this is also the big Zen Summit. Is the link to the Zen Foundation, uh, Unicraft starting as a Zen Foundation project. Um, what this resulted in is uh, a lot of student engagement and we kind of pride ourselves and also rely a lot on, on student engagement in the community. So um, apart from students who do it just for fun, we have a connection with their, let's say, academic interest, meaning that there, there are quite a bunch, I think about 30 uh, student projects that were di uh, diploma projects or bachelor projects and master projects. There are also PhD students who are involved and they uh, aim to both work as contributors to this and also tie their research uh, with uh, with Unicraft. Uh, we've done me student mentorship. So apart from diploma project, we we uh, 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 we so advertise to students in universities to uh, be part of a kind of a close con connection with uh, one maintainer. I'm I'm mentoring for students, for example. Uh, and uh, provide them with support, advice, uh, guidelines, uh, uh, any any form of uh, uh, of support they require to be contributors and to use Unicraft. And this has been very very successful. The one that have been doing this are I would say full members of the community. Some of them are also in leadership position in the community. Uh, also, starting from this year, we've been part of Google Summer of Code. Uh, this year, we uh, we had three students. Uh, they just completed their work. They they were very very good students, and their contributions uh, are useful for the project. The most important part here is that apart from their working Google Summer of Code, they are going to continue to be involved. One of them is going to uh, do a six month diploma project. Uh, that's going to be a continuation from uh, uh, for his uh, Google Summer of Code project. Uh, also, people who graduated Unicraft Summer of Code, there's I think three or four of those who then be who had who who since then have been part of the community. So this is another way uh, through which using these events and hackathons we attract people to the community. Um, and as hackathons, we uh, we create these challenges. Students are receiving their first uh, intro in Unicraft, and then they are able to solve let's say beginner friendly challenges such as fixing bugs, uh, warnings, creating tests, porting simple applications, creating pull requests and getting them uh, accepted as soon as possible. And this is something very fun for them because uh, in the two weeks time, they are able to create uh, their own contribution and have their name as part of a uh, uh, commit in the open source, uh, in an open source repository. Uh, more on the technical side, so this was most on the community side and what we've, what, uh, what's what been happening and what we've been doing to increase the visibility of the project. More on the technical side, these are some recent features that have been requested for a while and we implemented during the past uh, year or so. Uh, a unit testing framework for internal testing of Unicraft components. A virtual memory API, until now it was kind of a linear mapping. Now you are able to use paging and uh, do all sorts of interesting things with with this uh, SMP support. This was heavily requested when we did uh, our 0.6 release, if I recall, and it was that Hacker News post. 
a lot of people asked about SMP support. Uh, there's a VS Code extension. This is a uh, one that allows you to easily build and play around with Unicraft as part of Visual Studio Code, one of the most heavily used IDs out there. Uh, and there's uh, a component we'll, we'll on, on uh, internal metrics, we call it UK Store, such that if you do any sort of monitoring or you also want to configure or command the Unikernel uh, as it runs, you can use this UK Store interface. So think of items such as procfs, sysfs, that could be built or monitoring in, uh, monitoring interfaces that could be built on top of uh, UK Store. So other items that we are working on, uh, so the, most of these are close to be complete. It will take uh, uh, some month to, to get them all done, but they are, uh, some of them are very close to completion. One of them is uh, a tooling upgrade. Our companion tool was called Craft. Now there's a, a complete rewrite of this fully featured that's called CraftKit. Uh, the, uh, the hope here, the aim is to make it seem very, as easy as we can for, uh, potential users to try Unicraft to see how you can download it, package it, run it, test it, uh, uh, do a profiling on it. This is what CraftKit is going to be. Uh, there's going to be an early release sometime in, uh, late September. So two or three weeks from now, early October. Uh, muscle support. Muscle is a standard celebrity, which is more featureful than we work with what, what we currently are using. That's new libc. This is also planned to increase the, uh, uh, the application, uh, support. Synchronization. Now that we have SMP, it's important. Integration testing to make sure that everything runs properly. And this is going to also be integrated with the CHD system. Security features. There's a bunch of them that we have enabled. Uh, safe stack. There are ARM based features. There's now, uh, one, one, uh, Google Summer of Code student worked on shadow stack. We also want to add the common security features such as ASLR, uh, data execution prevention or WX or X on this. There's current work on RISC 5 support. This is currently working. It's in a draft format. Now, uh, Eddie, who's working on this is, uh, also uh, providing SMP support. And we also want to increase the um, number of platforms supported. Uh, meaning that VMware, Hyper-V, and Firecracker uh, are currently uh, being worked on. Firecracker support is pretty advanced. Uh, the expectation is that in maybe three or four months, Firecracker support will be fully integrated in uh, Unicraft. Um, so this is where we are, but we are still facing some challenges and we are actively working towards them. What we've been... Uh, what we've seen as part of the hackathons is there's a, um, there's kind of a, a rigid, uh, difficult, let's say, way of users to try to use Unicraft. They bump into all sorts of issues and we need to work on making it as user friendly as it can, including the documentation. We are now working on adding frequently asked questions and generally having one command or two commands that makes it extremely easy or as easy as it can actually for someone to use it. This is one of the challenge. The other one is on porting new libraries, but this is aiming to be solved uh, with the support of Muscle. Muscle is very likely to uh, allow us to uh, easy uh, uh, to make it more easy to port new libraries and applications. Um, an important side is we are mostly, let's say, a student-centric due to our academic background project. We are, uh, we are looking for, uh, experienced contributors. And what we also found and, uh, what advised on is that we need actual users. So companies and, uh, people who are going to be using the, the product as it is. And then the developers who work for these companies are the ones that are going to contribute to the OSS project. So we are looking into that. Uh, the other one is, uh, continuous way of improving the code quality and, Permitting good practice in the community. So making sure that people follow some very important guidelines with practices for doing reviews, for coding, uh, for debugging and adding features. Those challenges are kind of taken care of by the items that we have here. So, uh, we've, uh, as I, I also been part of, uh, open source summit. There was a community leadership track there and there were a lot of discussion of, uh, chaos. This is, uh, these are metrics for open source projects and I learned quite a lot of items, uh, from that. And we, we plan to use them in our community to see what are, uh, what are places, let's say, location, the community in our workings 
that we, we need to improve. Uh, documentation wise, we want to do a full API documentation, internal API. This is currently only partially done. And this is also uh, uh, making, make, maybe making uh, future contributors difficult to contribute because they don't know uh, how the interface looks like. They need to look at the code by having an API documentation make things easier. Uh, the unit testing framework that we used uh, is currently uh, doesn't have those many tests. So we want to improve the existence of tests by leveraging UK tests. There's a discussion on platform re-architecting given that we now have uh, soon to have risk five support as architecture and then uh, Firecracker and Hyper-V and VMware. There's now the need to move the common parts into some sort of common folder and leave only the specific ones uh, in their uh, specific parts of the tree. And for kind of these guidelines and community rules, we are now discussing about code conventions. So having a common coding style throughout the project, there, there are some inconsistencies. And of course, improving documentation, mentioning frequently asked questions, common pitfalls, and everything that is going to make life easier and uh, help newcomers um, Breach that stage of, of, of a contributor as soon as they can. This is it from my side. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is Unicraft project. If you search it on Google, you're going to see uh, the GitHub page, uh, Discord, the website, and any sort of other information is going to be available one click away. If there are any questions, I would be happy to respond.